Everybody, Dave here in Freeman Investing. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a Roth ladder. Um, why would you even wanna do a Roth ladder? What is it? And how can it even uh, help you in early retirement or in fire? Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just starting to dig into a lot of these retirement plans and you know, what's the best method for me to go forward. Roth ladder has been something that I've known about for about uh, seven years now. And it's been on my you know, plan to do. Um, now there's a lot of different caveats and a lot of different retirement plans. There's Roth IRA, there's Roth 401k, there's IRA. There's 401k, there's solo 401k, there's self-directed IRA, there's so many different retirement plans out there. I am not an expert here, so you know, talk to a tax advisor. Um, I'm still going through all the research uh, myself, so um, I do have a solo 401k and I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that I can you know, draw some cash out of that to roll over into a Roth IRA. Um, but I haven't really explored much into that yet. So what we're gonna do today is just kind of show you the process of what a Roth ladder is, how can it help you in early retirement, fire, right? And you know how you can basically take the money out of your 401k tax-free and withdraw it so it'll be 459 and a half. So let's go ahead and dig in here and look at uh, the spreadsheet. So all right, here is the spreadsheet Roth conversion ladder. All right, now this is just a standard uh, 401k to Roth conversion. Okay, now why would you even want to do that? It's because you can't take money out of your 401k. Uh, without taking a penalty on it. So, you know, you got to pay the taxes, not to mention you got to pay that 10% penalty, right? So that's if you withdraw before that 59 and a half years old. So how can you access that money ahead of time? All right, now I'm happen to be 45 years old right now, and I'm not going to retire here until 2022, most likely I'll be 47, and maybe I'll retire before my birthday. So maybe I'll be 46, I don't know, but, um, so what it is is to say you have some money in your 401k and you know, you know, there's a lot of different options you have. Um, you know, if you're in a higher income bracket like I am, you can't even contribute to a Roth, okay? There's a cutoff at like, well, 136, okay? So I haven't contributed to a Roth ever in my life, all right? Now the Roth 401k, I think, came into existence around 2006, if I'm not mistaken. And I think the Roth IRAs, I think, came out around the late 90s, if I'm not mistaken. So don't quote me on that. Go and do your own research, but, um, and, you know, but I wasn't making $136,000 back in 2006, but I didn't even know about a Roth IRA or Roth 401k or anything like that. So they weren't really popular back then. But uh, so I'm in, in, I'm in a higher income bracket now and I can't even contribute to one. So um, there is something called, maybe maybe even heard of it, a backdoor uh, Roth conversion. Okay, backdoor Roth. Um, there is even something called a mega conversion or mega backdoor, all right? And it's not the backdoor you're thinking of, all right? So get that out of your head. Um, and there's also something called like a solo 401k parachute, which I do have a solo 401k, so I'm gonna try to go through those options as well. But let's just say you have some money into a 401k and you, um, you're you still working, so you don't wanna convert that money because guess what? That money that you can convert every year is gonna get taxed in whatever bracket you're in. So if you're in a 40% or a 30% tax bracket, that money that gets converted is gonna uh, count as ordinary income and you're going to pay that 30 or 40 percent tax on it all right now you wouldn't have to pay the penalty um, to do the conversion but you're going to have to pay that tax on it so it makes sense to wait until you fire and have a low uh, ordinary income like me right so i'm going to have a low ordinary income plus if you're single uh, you have that 12,400 deduction, okay? So this or counts as ordinary income. So, you know, if you didn't have any of the ordinary income, you can convert up to 12,000 if you're single and not pay a dime in taxes, okay? So uh, if you're married, it's double that. So you're at 24,800, so you can convert $24,000 a year, assuming you have no other ordinary income. Uh, from your uh, 401k to a Roth and not pay any taxes on it. All right, so those are a couple of the rules there. If you're getting any benefit out of this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and set that bell notification. 
Now, I'm not gonna talk about the back door Roth because it kind of gets confusing and it gets, especially if you have a multiple different IRA accounts and all like that, and it's a lot of money in those, so it kind of gets confusing. So that's the reason why you wanna wait until you fire or retire early to start the Roth conversion because you can pay lower you know, income taxes or pay zero. So let's just assume that I retire here and I am at year 22. Let's just say I have no other ordinary income, uh, which I happen to have from my real estate notes, which I've talked about. Now we look at this video here. So uh, 2022, I retire and uh, I'm age 47. So I'm just gonna say I'm gonna convert $6,000 and from the 401k to a Roth, I'm not gonna pay any tax on that, all right? Now it's gonna just sit there, and then that immediately gets moved to the uh, Roth conversion total here, which we'll just call like the bank or something like that. I'm only living off of $30,000, which I'm gonna you know, basically take out of my brokerage accounts or any taxable account, all right, in early retirement. For $30,000, that's what I'm living on right now, okay, when I'm employed, I'm living in Denver, and I'm basically living about $30,000 a year, all right? So I have inflation in there at 3%, maybe that's a little high, maybe it's not. Um, so that is uh, $30,000 for the first year. I'm living off that, off the taxable accounts. You know, the second year goes by, we're gonna do inflation adjusted here. We're gonna subtract or convert, I should say, another 6180, okay? That's eight, the 3% uh, inflation built in there. We're gonna subtract 30,000 or, you know, I guess, you know, withdrawal 30,900. And that could be, you know, dividend income or whatever else. It could just be taken right out of your high yield savings account. Your high yes, right? So. Um, and then that gets moved down here to the second year. Okay, we got the five year holding period here, met since 2022. Okay, we're gonna talk about that here in a second. And the third year goes by where you convert another 63, uh, 65, because you gotta understand that the tax bracket moves up every year as well. That 20,000, excuse me, 20, 12,400 or the 24,800 goes up every year as well. So we can, that's inflation adjust as well. So we can kind of adjust this if we want to, we can do, you know, 3% or something like that or 2%. Oops, I screwed that up. 2%. There we go. 2%. Um, ah, why do I keep messing that up? 2%. There we go. And I can adjust those all the way down if I want to. So anyways, we'll adjust them back to 3%. I'm just trying to be conservative here. So, um, and I keep putting the percent sign in there twice for whatever reason there. So, okay, there we go, adjust it back. And then we hit the third year point here at 2025, a year 2025, I'm 50 years old. And we're, oh, excuse me, that's the fourth year, by the way. And then it gets added to the withdrawal from uh, Roth. It adds, gets added to the bank here. So this is how much we have in there. Um, after the one, two, three, four, fifth year right here, we have $31,000 just sitting in that Roth conversion bank. And now that could just be a, um, a retirement account at a brokerage, all right? Like, you know, Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab. So that could be invested. It doesn't have to sit there, okay? So that can be invested, all right? So, and by the way, your, your uh, 401k up here is invested as well, right? So most likely, if you do things right, um, now there's a couple different things here, but you know, you're probably generating more than $6,000 of return from that account. So you're really not drawing that account down at all. Okay. While you're doing this conversion. So that's why it helps to be married because you could probably draw those accounts down. Ideally you want to draw those 401k accounts down to zero, um, before you meet that, uh, our, uh, what is it? RMD, the minimum the minimum required minimum distribution before you meet that required minimum distribution because they're going to require you to take out that money when you get to a certain age okay and every different counts different some could be 70 could be 70 72 so they're all different numbers there um but don't quote me on that like i said do your own research but 70 70 or 72 um the irs is going to require you to start taking money out all right so and why is that a bad thing because guess what that counts as ordinary income and it's going to push you into another tax bracket and you know maybe you're getting dividends maybe your dividends going to get start tax now okay so ideally you want to try to draw that account down to zero um, it's not going to work for me probably because i'm getting quite a bit of return from that account 
and unless I got married or something like that, um, I just don't see me be able to uh, convert more than I can, more than I'm generating in that account. So if you're getting any information out of this video, go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. All right, so continuing on here, we get to, let's say 2027, we're converting 69.55, that gets added to the bank. Um, that's the withdrawal right there, gets converted, and it gets added here. And then the five-year holding period met since 2027. So by the time we hit to 2027 here, guess what? We have $6,000 available to us to withdraw tax-free, all right? So that's why it gets added over here. We're gonna take this $34,778 and subtract that from our brokerage account or whatever account you have there that's on the taxable side that you're living off of. Okay, if you're using the 3% rule, the 3.5% rule, the 4% rule, you probably heard of the 4% rule. So we can get take that money. We have that money available to us now. So it gets added over here. We have $40,000 available to us now. You don't have to use it, okay? But it's sitting there available to you tax free, okay? So we'll move on to you know the next year here. And guess what? We have another uh, chunk here that met the five-year holding period. And that gets added to our withdrawal here and then the $42,000. So ideally in people in FIRE, what they normally do is they normally withdraw from their taxable accounts till it gets to zero to gap them. Okay, if you retire to 35, you gotta have a lot of money on your taxable side that bridges you to the Roth conversion ladder, right? So because a lot of my net worth is tied up in taxable accounts, I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't have to worry about that, all right? I'm never gonna run out of money on the taxable side. So most people, when they retire early, they've been stocking a lot of cash uh, away in the tax deferred side, so they're in a different bucket. They're gonna be drawing off those taxable sides until they can get to the minimum of the five-year holding period where they can supplement that income at that point. So. I'm in a little bit different boat, so you kind of need to weigh that option. If you're in my boat where you stocked a lot more money away in your taxable side, then you're pretty much just going to convert and uh, withdraw from your taxable accounts and probably pretty much living off of that. So, um, you don't, like I said, you don't have to use that money here. That $6,000 is going to, you know, we're going to add the 61, the 63, and the 65. And it kind of just adds up here. All right. And that money can just, you know, get gains there. Okay. Some of the gains would be taxable, if I'm not mistaken, up till 59, I think. Um, I could be wrong on that. Um, I'm not like an expert here, so um, this is how I understand it. I'm still doing a lot of research, uh, what's best for me. So uh, $45,000, just to say you're living off your dividends, you don't even need to take that money out, all right? So you can just be living off that 41,000 and then just have that you know, $45,000 just waiting there, okay? And it's just making interest, it's making you know, dividends or anything like that. And if you needed to take it out in a chunk, you could. You had it available for you, okay? Or you can take out the five-year holding period amount and supplement your income if you want to. That'd be 48,000. So that is the process of a Roth conversion ladder. Um, I have mine all the way out to uh, 2020, excuse me, 2065 age 90, which I probably won't make it to. I'm thinking, I'm just planning my retirement out to about 85 years old. Um, just given what you know where people have lived in my uh, in my family so um, 85 you know, the earlier I can retire, maybe you know the more I can make it too, right? So you know less stress involved. So there's all the subtractions, you know, up to 90 years old uh, of income that I lived off of. You know, it kind of gets big, real big here. But those numbers look big, but you got to understand that's you know several years away. Okay, so there's interest. Uh, excuse me, there's inflation in there and all that. So yeah, I might be living off $125,000 a year, but I guarantee you, by the time I'm 90 years old, that $125,000 is going to be like probably like 25,000 in today's money you know so just take that into account so um, that's the process of a Roth conversion ladder like I said I'll probably make more videos on this uh, going forward um, you know probably talk about like the backdoor conversion I'll probably talk about maybe the mega backdoor I'll probably talk about the solo 401k parachute because I do have a solo 401k I need to figure out how I can convert money out of that solo 401k to like a Roth solo 401k even if those even exist I'm not sure if they even do but um, like I said one of the things is you want to try if you can to convert as much money as you can um, from your 401k 
or whatever, you know, even if it's an IRA or something like that, and you want to convert that money and get it down to zero if you can before those required minimum distributions start, all right? So um, I think that's it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, um, go ahead and leave a comment below. I hope this helps you out. Um, I'm also going to link down in uh, the description and probably like the pinned comment. I'll probably just put a link to my Amazon affiliates link there. Um, you can shop through Amazon and uh, not pay a dime extra and you can support this channel if you want. Um, there's no obligation there. I do get a small commission from any purchase that you make. Uh, on Amazon using my link. You don't have to buy that product that I'm linking. You can buy any product you want. So click on that link, buy any product you want, and I'll get a small commission. You can support me for making these videos, and which take a lot of time and uh, a lot of effort. So um, with that, let's go ahead and end the video. Um, thanks everybody for uh, watching, and go ahead and like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.